First off, I should warn you not to eat while reading or listening to this story. It's going to be quite disgusting and mind-bending. Consider yourself warned. Let's begin. If it sees you, don't move. I was sitting there watching the trailer for Trailer Park Boys when my friend Jack suddenly burst through the door, stumbling as he looked back over his shoulder. He was so startled, he nearly dropped his plate of hot chicken wings. A fancy weekend meal fit for kings. Jesus Christ! Jack! What the hell? I shouted at him, using my other hand to turn off the TV, annoyed that he'd ruined my peaceful moment from hours earlier. Shit! 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 He said, talking to himself, not to me. Then he kicked the door shut as he got up off the floor. Now I was starting to worry. Jack wasn't the type to scare easily. I'd seen him punch guys three times his size right in the face. And when a situation got tense enough for fight or flight, he always chose to stay and fight. Stupid? Maybe. But scared? Never. Jack, you alright there, buddy? I asked him, setting my plate of chicken on the coffee table trying to gauge what kind of situation this was. Was it a grab a weapon kind of thing or a call the cops and pray kind of thing? He spun around and bolted past me, straight into the kitchen. Then he dragged out a chair and wedged it under the doorknob, just like in the movies. Who'd you piss off this time? I asked. Shh! He snapped at me and looked at me suspiciously. Turn the lights off, he whispered between ragged breaths. I moved towards the light switch, trying not to make any loud noises, and flipped it off. The apartment was now pitch black. Are you going to tell me what the hell happened? Shh! He snarled at me again, then listened intently at the door. We stood there in awkward silence in the dark, for about a few minutes. Finally, he relaxed a bit, then slowly made his way to the couch, sat down, sighed as he tried to stretch his stiff body out of its state of extreme tension. I sat down with him, but didn't say anything. Surely he knew he had to explain what had happened by now. At last he was calm enough, and started to tell me. First thing, if it sees you, don't move. It can tell what's prey, and it'll chase you. At least I think so. What? What is it? Who's chasing you? Did you get in a fight? What? What is it? What's chasing me? It's not a who. Oh yeah, so what is chasing you? What is it? I don't know, I saw it by the woods, just sitting there, then staring at me, after I glared at it thinking it was some punk kids playing a prank. Next thing I know, it's like, its head turned inside out, then it jerked, and it just started chasing me, so I ran all the way back here. Sitting close to him, I could smell the strong scent of alcohol. His body odor was a horrific mix of unwashed man and cheap rum. You're drunk off your ass. I'm, I'm not hallucinating. This is real. I swear. I'm not kidding. He yelled, then glanced at the window, and lowered his voice again. Jack was always hot-tempered when sober, but alcohol made him hot enough to melt steel. I needed to calm him down first. Approach the subject slowly. Even if this idiot had ruined a relaxing evening for me, because that's what friends are for, right? Okay, I'm sorry, I said and backed off trying not to let emotions get in the way of the conversation. So where were you? Near the train tracks on the way back from the bar. Okay, so what should we do now? I don't know. I didn't look back after running for a while. It runs fast, like a cheetah or something. It moves like a circus clown or a dancer or something. It doesn't walk like a human or animal. I don't even understand how I managed to escape it. He was starting to spiral. I knew it. Whenever Jack had crazy ideas in his head that he couldn't understand, he couldn't stop thinking about them. Instead, they'd just spin around and around in that thick skull of his, consuming his mind, and sometimes wrecking his worldview. Things like that tended to irritate him endlessly, and I still couldn't find a surefire way to make him stop focusing on it. But I tried anyway. Well, we've locked the door tight, and I don't hear anything outside, I said, trying to calm him down a bit. You sure you don't hear anything? I'm sure. Shit. All right. Hey, thanks. Shit. I need a drink, he said, then jumped up from his seat and headed to the kitchen. After rummaging around for a bit, he came back with an ice-cold Mexican beer. He turned the light back on, then leaned down, smashed the bottle cap hard against the edge of the coffee table, sending the cap flying in a beautiful arc across the room. A true drinker's move. He immediately put the bottle to his lips, 
chugging it like a baby sucking on a pacifier. His throat made savage gulping sounds as he downed half the bottle in one tilt. He let out a loud ah as he set the beer on the table, then burped, then plopped down on the couch. And just like that, he was back to normal. Do you want to say anything else about it? I asked cautiously. Nah, it's fine. It's probably nothing. Sorry for being so tense earlier. That thing just looked fucking weird. He replied, his face expressionless, just like the blank TV screen, vacant, emotionless. Must have been something pretty terrifying, but it's okay, I said. Probably no need to dig deeper, or if not, we can talk about it tomorrow. So what do you want to watch? Jack didn't say anything, he just stared intently at the reflection on the pitch black TV screen, face straight ahead, arms awkwardly at his sides. Jack? TV? I repeated, but no answer. I followed his gaze, to see if he was tracking anything specific. At first glance there was nothing, not even a fly on the wall. But then there was a bit of movement somewhere. For a few seconds I could see something moving, seemingly changing shape, but I couldn't make out what it was. Then I realized it was on the TV screen, reflecting our image sitting on the couch. Jack's face was slowly rotating, like a clock. But instead of hour, minute, and second hands, the rotating parts were his mouth, eyes, and nose. Spinning around, it kept turning, pulling along the skin and flesh, while bones cracked and cartilage snapped inside his head. Then it stopped. And where his mouth used to be, there were two bloodshot eyes. And where the eyes used to be was the mouth, wide open, dripping with saliva and blood. I couldn't tell if it was a smile, a smirk, or a scowl, or all of them combined. My brain couldn't process the image clearly when everything was turned upside down. But one thing was certain, it was staring right at me. I was completely frozen, I couldn't even feel my legs anymore, and my throat was as dry as a desert. And the only thing I wanted to do right then was immediately chug Jack's beer. But I didn't scream or thrash, I just stared straight at the reflection, and it stared back at me. After what felt like an eternity, Jack stood up standing twisted in front of the TV, his body blocking the entire screen, its eyes looking straight at me. And then it started to dance, but not a real dance, more like an awkward swaying, it swung side to side, then jumped up and down, face jiggling along, while the remaining skin tried to hold that mess left on its face together. I didn't move. Jack told me not to flinch or move. That was all I could think about, and that thought kept me busy. It formed a barrier for my mind not to crumble in the face of whatever the hell was in front of me. After a while, as if in a final bow I guess, it stopped its damned swaying dance, started to lean down and pressed its face close, just a few centimeters from my face. Trying to scare me, I had to look straight at it. Although by then, it wasn't really looking at me anymore. Because its eyes were closed, it opened its mouth revealing two eyeballs still connected to its flesh by something inside. They were held in place by gums, without teeth. Instead, there were tiny blood-filled holes. The eyeballs rolled around abnormally, still functioning like eyes, then finally stared straight into my eyes. I swear, and I could see Jack in there. More terrified than ever, I felt sorry for him. My best friend, my roommate, my damn best friend. Now turned into this thing, then the two halves of the gums pressed tightly together, squishing the eyeballs flat until they burst and sprayed some liquid all over my face. Survival instinct called for me to flinch, to resist, or to run away, more intensely than ever before, especially now that my eyes felt like they were burning. As that fluid started to drip down, very quickly it started to open its mouth again. A round mass of flesh and muscle gradually emerged from its mouth. It was spherical wrapped around by tendons, and from all sides of it protruded Jack's yellowed teeth, stuck straight into the flesh. It was so big that the protruding teeth hit and stabbed everywhere inside the mouth, as if trying to force itself out of there, until finally it cut through the two lips and fell to the ground, making a loud sound of teeth hitting the hard wooden floor. That thing continued to get closer, and opened one eye. Out of it crawled a twisted tongue, still looking dirty and yellow from the cheap rum Jack had been drinking. It got closer and closer, until it touched my face, and licked off the liquid from the eyeballs that had sprayed on my face earlier. The tongue was still warm and moist, and it licked all over my face, 
as if licking up every last bit of eye left. From somewhere inside the vocal cords and throat, I could hear a growl of satisfaction, contentment, until the monster finally backed away. I could feel the saliva stuck on my face starting to dry, creating a disgusting film. It made my face itch and feel terribly uncomfortable. I needed to do something. I had been motionless for too long, and the nerves in my body started to rebel, screaming at me, move. That thing turned its face towards me, the tongue still sticking out from that eye. I didn't know if it could see me anymore because it didn't have eyes anymore. I still didn't dare to move. Time was running out, a lunge, a twist, or a punch. Something was about to happen. Some movement had to be made so I could escape this motionless state. But very quickly that thing turned its face away and staggered towards the window, slow, clumsy, as if it had lost control of the muscle groups in its body. It opened the window, then jumped out. Our apartment was on the eighth floor, so it fell from quite a height. I heard a very loud impact. Although the monster was gone, it took a while before I felt safe enough to move again. When the police and rescue team arrived, I tried to explain to them what had happened. I thought my story must have been at least somewhat logical and credible. Because I mean, his face being like that was evidence, right? That face couldn't have been caused by any natural force. But they just blamed it on the fall. They twisted my story to make it sound like he was mentally unstable. An alcoholic who drank too much. Then jumped out the window and landed head first. And that fall caused him to be deformed like that. They completely denied my story, blamed me, said I was mocking Jack's death, they even said I might have been high on weed, or drunk, or both. But I know, that's not what happened, that's all I know. And it doesn't help at all. I can't fight this, I can't argue with anyone. And Jack, Jack is gone forever, grateful that I'm still alive, of course. But now, I feel more scared than ever. I mean that monster, did it really die with Jack that day? And there's one more thing that confuses me. I couldn't find the round mass of flesh and teeth that the monster vomited out that day anywhere. The crime scene team also said they didn't find anything. And because of that, they wouldn't be able to believe the story I told that day. 